ready for gray zone? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's, it's uh, I'm have you know mildly hyped, you know, as as the tag goes. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I'm not, for sure, I'm not super in love with it, which I think makes me the aberration. Um, but I think that makes me um, probably have clearer clearer vision of what it actually is, as opposed to like you know seeing for what it want what I want it to be. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I um. I have two buddies that uh, I pretty much dropped because <laughs> they keep playing Tarkov. So I could go on this whole content creation rampage with Grey Zone Warfare and whatnot. And um, I was going to do a video with them, but my computer had crashed like a few days before and it wasn't set up properly and my audio didn't record for OBS. Sucking. Yeah. So they, they gave a pretty good bit of insight and they pointed some things out, which I, I kind of knew about. I mean... The main issue that I see is PvP. Not, not seeming there's going to be enough PvP. And I'm, I'm yeah. skeptical, right? I, yeah. I didn't get a chance to, read through, to listen to the, to the whole podcast yet, um, but because um, I usually like to listen to that stuff like, you know, to and from the house and whatnot, and things yeah, like for sure. where I'm working out. I was at work at the time, so I really couldn't hear it per se. Like, I could give it the, the, the time uh watch the boost for sure but like you know like i wouldn't actually listen to it so um yeah. but i think i've made two videos on this already in terms of the pvp one not be but one first one being concerned that it wouldn't be enough and now i'm the, ne the la latest one i have like you know what it might be a decent amount actually um it just depends on the flow of things in terms of where they want to um guide the player in terms of the 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 quests and missions and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, but like, and you guys, you guys figured this out in terms of the map. Uh, there's the copy paste uh, starter area for each, each uh, little fob and whatnot. And I think it's obviously designed to prevent newer players from getting stomped on by, you know, everybody else in the, in the lobby, Yeah, uh, which is uh, a good uh, goal to have. I think one of the, biggest problems um that uh, a lot of extraction games have is it's not new player friendly and that's pretty much how you lose retention right away right just it's just not you're not holding their hand enough right and you know in the end of the day it's a game if you don't hold people's hands they're not going to keep playing yeah i i think that's why they implemented the map even though tarkov's like a one and done type of thing like dude there's people that don't know shit about it and still play the fuck out of it, you know? For sure. So it's like I, I think because there's no other options, to be perfectly honest. I think Grey Zone yeah. Warfare, uh, and there, there's no world in which Grey Zone Warfare and Tarkov are both successful. It, it, it does, does not happen. Yeah. I think, um, and I've commented on this before, basically it's like I feel like the extraction game genre is underserved currently. Um because there is, you know, it's it's not a huge market. It's a niche game type thing. It's it's re not reasonable to ask the average player who plays an hour a day, which is average of 30 or something, whatever it is, usually with kids. But it's not reasonable to ask them to play a game that wipes every three months and you lose your stuff every time you die. So if you actually have a bad night of gaming in an hour, you actually end up more negative than you when you started. It's not a reasonable ask for most people. Yeah. So naturally, the player base availability for such a game type is going to be smaller than call of duty for example or even like a squad for that matter um and so with that in mind you know you you only have so many so much room for extraction shooters and it, despite what people may say online who don't play extraction shooters it's not a saturated market you have hunt you have try escape from tarkov that's basically it yeah right you know people can come up other examples and that these are basically dead games walking or they're fake extraction shooters like hawk for example yeah um, it's it's super yeah, niche I, for sure. It is, and then to top it off, it's niche. But then to top it off, there's the mill sim slash hardcore niche corner of it. Yeah. And so you have you know the more casual, which is hunt, and then you have Tarkov, which is a uh, um you know the more high tension mill sim version uh, of that. I don't think there's a lot of player base, that, that enough player base to sustain both of them. It won't happen, in my opinion. The thing that's going to set Grey Zone apart is theme and then mods. Like, I, I know Tarkov has its whole mod thing and whatnot, 
with a single player, get player for using Tarkov it, and all. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point of it. It's like, shit. But then Grades One Warfare with Steam is just, man. I if they do it right and they don't have the cheaters like Tarkov has, and they could semi have the same decent amount of PvP going on. I feel it's going to be insane because once they drop, so it, this is going to be like a two to three years out type deal. Rogues. Once they have that whole rogue implementation and depending upon how deep they go with it, which if they do go deep, like I'm talking to like, there's a specific point on the map where if you go rogue, that's where you and your whoever other factions there are, y'all are friends now. But y'all could kill each other too, obviously, you know? But y'all now have sa the same goals. So it's technically like a fourth faction. Y'all like to go rogue and just kill and do PvP. Okay, awesome. Put y'all all together. Boom, right there. And now y'all could go wherever y'all want together if you want. Or going rogue as a penalty, you know, you don't know if they're going to go rogue on you right away, you know? So for sure. It, I that's think, the caveat. I, I think so far, from what I've seen of what their intentions are, not what they've seen in terms of games, but what their intentions are, for me, I feel like these devs are very naive when it comes to player interactions. Like, I think they're very naive when it comes to what players will do to each other when you give them the option. <clears throat> like, like, so for example, if you are starting off early access with zero penalties for killing fellow PMCs, there will be plenty of PMC killing. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's, it's just a given. Like we, we talked about this on the collective plenty of times. We're basically like, okay, if we jump in and there's like a four man, six man squad or whatever it is we've managed to kind of put together right anybody else we see regardless of what what base it came from is an enemy full stop we will loot their shit bring it back to the stash it's our shit and like we are not the only people thinking that way in fact that will probably be the norm right that'll be the most likely case scenario where people will just assume every player is an enemy full stop call it a day because there's zero penalties in assuming otherwise when you, yeah. when they launch early access they're gonna find this out the hard way yep exactly what i was about to say because if and it's hard to implement something like dude it they don't know what they're doing right now with the whole pve being crossed with pvp that's going to be bro those pve fuckers are gonna get their asses handed to them well, I mean, this, that's another thing as well. I, I, I kind of insinuated this with the interview that I had with Rick is basically like when you're allowing PVE people to se to to selectively remove themselves from the, the 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 pool of players, you're inherently going to get more aggressive players in the PVP enabled so zones because the PVE players, the players who are more passive are no longer taking up those slots. Yeah. So like just by having the option for PVE, You've in, you've created a higher PVP zone a zone in the ones that are enabled because the people there are way more inclined to you know go blow for blow with another player right which for me as a PVP player I'm all for like yay cool do that now the question becomes is that how hard will it be to actually you know do PVP how meaningful will it be the way I see it is it's gonna be very similar to the cycle in that there did you ever play the cycle frontier by the way. No, I never played. Okay. All right. So the Cycle Frontier basically it relied on its your your the campaigns to basically unlock new maps. I see this as what's going to happen here in the sense that you cannot reasonably ask somebody to be like, cool, you have to go walk an hour in real time to go unlock a new LZ potentially at another another zone before you can start getting uh, missions over there. That's not reasonable. So game design wise, I think what's going to happen is that you're going to go through your missions and in about I don't know twenty missions or so, maybe thirty or whatever. Right, you're gonna get missions, or maybe even sooner than that. Who knows? Missions that will open up new LZs to new areas, and these areas are gonna be the ones that are between the two the, the the enemy fobs. So likely, as you start unlocking those zones, other players start unlocking those zones, and so those will be the main areas in which you start getting your initial PvP action. If you yeah. do that right, in terms of pacing the missions together, there will always be a solid chance of players being the same POI as you, and. As soon as you start hearing gunshots that aren't yours, that's pretty much a, a dinner bell ringing at that point for most people who want PvP. Yeah. I completely agree. It's... 
it's going to be a bloodbath for sure. It's just going to be a matter of how much is it? Is it going to be enough to sustain people? Because I can easily see a situation where uh, people will say, well, this is too much PVP, right? In terms of like, I'm trying to do my missions and I keep getting stomped on by people who are, you know, just rushing my gunshots, all that kind of good jazz, blah, 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 right? I can easily see that being a part, being a feedback, right? And my concern is that their rationale, right, won't be maybe you should do that part of the mission on PVE only, right? Uh, my concern is that maybe we should do, reduce the amount of players on the map so we can reduce those interactions because, quote unquote, we want to make PVE the main focus. I'm concerned that's going to be the response. Yeah. But and we're, 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 we're getting well ahead of ourselves on this one, but like, that's one of the reasons why I firmly believe that people should be very active on giving feedback on the on the oh yeah the places where they're at and defend your points vigorously vigorously because if you don't someone else will on the opposite side i think the next thing we need to see really is basically a showdown on the pvp aspect portion with zero yep. pve get us a good like just hardcore gameplay walkthrough of where players going to one objective they know that there's other players in the area and then we just get a fight going on you know close quarters well, you all would that. need you would need the pve elements because that's part of the game right like yeah the, the thing about the, the cycle that a lot of players did not understand about the game right at least well a lot of the players who played it consistently did but it wasn't a very big player base but people coming in didn't understand this is that the pve purely exists to facilitate pvp purely for that right that was the cycle mind you yeah and so they've clearly you know, shown and messaged plenty of times that that's not the case here. Here, the PVE is a big uh, factor to it. And based off of what we've seen, you know, uh, taking on a, a PVP fight or trying to force a PVP fight while you've got the aggro of PVE is not a smart idea. Right? So if anything, it's like you need to keep your head on a swivel when you are engaging in PVE because if a player comes running up on you while that's happening, that's, you know, that's not ideal. That's just, that's, that's a quick way to lose your stuff. And so I think that should be part of the factor as well. When they show, hey, we're having a fight, and then suddenly, oh, okay, if there's players coming in or whatever it is, we're rolling up on them or they roll up on us, they really need to show that because it needs to be shown to be, um, you know, enjoyable, fun, right? And also differentiate themselves from Tarkov in the sense that, like, yeah, we can do this too, but we can do it better, right? And so we'll see what that looks like without also turning off people who are, you know, maybe Tarkov light enjoyers you know like hey we like to play tarkov but like maybe not that much and so we're coming here for maybe like a halfway point yeah um what i'm thinking is um uh, they need a karma system pretty much like scabs right off the bat tied solely to your faction's loot and what you get for that loot i i don't know how they would do it because it's how would you increase your karma? You know, just not killing players uh, right. of your that, faction. Think, that's, yeah, and I think, I think that's issue. kind of the problem. I think that's going to be the kind of problem of having a karma system to begin with, right? Like, I think again, being very naive um, about players' interactions because, like, unless the penalties are severe enough, players won't give a shit about them. They'll just endure the cost, right? Yeah. Um, because that's was the same way in, in in the cycle where basically like. They were trying to, you know, uh, discourage people from running like super expensive weapons and armor, or whatever it is, all the time by increasing their like cost for upkeep. But it didn't matter because the players who were running this expensive gear, anyways, were doing missions that gave us so much money or in general had so much money already that it didn't matter anymore. Like it just it had no value in terms of like create increasing the cost. All that did was make it made it prohibitive for people just to, to get into that point to begin with. The people who were easily getting to that point that's not prohibited for them the people who have a hard time getting to that point made it harder for them and so in a lot of ways a karma system like it would have to be so punitive that it actually be no longer becomes fun anymore <laughs> like it actually becomes super punishing because if the karma system is super punishing you'll you know how do i how would i do that so let's say you yeah, the karma system is so punishing that if you kill a single and uh friendly pmc um you know, you automatically like lose X, Y, Z amount of gear or whatever. That's so much, that's so severe that it's like, you never want to do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's say we go with that route. 
right? So you would need to reasonably give players tools to be able to discern one PMC from another in terms of faction. Emblems. On the face value, not the worst thing in the world. However, it does kill the lore quite a bit, which these devs seem pretty hell-bent on maintaining. So not likely, but the alternative would be to essentially show them on the map. Again, yeah. breaking with lore, but not as much, so you can probably see themselves see themselves doing this. That takes all of the guesswork out of it completely and utterly. Yeah, because you can just go. I'm gonna check the map, and if I see a blip on where I think this where this player I, I I saw was, I know it's a it's a friendly PMC. So you've removed that completely. Therefore, the penalties now become null and void. It doesn't matter anymore. So you've instituted all this penalty system to basically have it do nothing, except for if griefers want to grief and they will take the penalties anyways, they'll do it anyways. Because at that point, the people who are super rich and chatted out and already completely full flush, they'll do it anyways. But now you've given them GPS and how to find people. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> so like, how do you do that? Like, essentially, how, how do you really do that at the end of the day? And so I don't see that as a... Um, I don't see that as a good long-term system without having its own its own problems. Yeah. And I I think uh from what I remember they they wanted PVE only in the beginning. So honestly, I think this is the reason for the de the delay that is so difficult to say. Uh I don't know how long they're delaying for, but I could almost say this is one of the things for certain that's delaying. I could them. almost I can almost guarantee you, right, that uh, I'm not sure if it was a delay per se or what have you. It is maybe they just they just you know are pushing it back because we don't know. They can probably just drop it April first for all we know. Yeah. Um, True. But here's here's my um, this is my speculation on terms of why, for example, PVE uh, is the progress is being shared with PVP. Uh, PVE came later, based off feedback. And that was easy enough to separate the different kinds of servers. However, in terms of your, your ability to um, have two different progresses, essentially you have to have two different characters, which basically doubles up the characters for every single player, which may not be so easy to maintain in terms of technical ability. So that's probably why they're shared progress, is that they don't have the time or the money without delay, without you know delaying the actual release of the game. Now, if the game gets, re it gets released six months from now, um, and it's less shared progress, then I'm at a loss for words as to why that's the case. There's a few people I've talked to about the whole early access seven years, and it's like, bro, they've left comments like, what are they, fucking crazy? I'm like, bro, that's what Tarkov is. They're past that right now. I think right. they're like eight and a half years, nine yeah, years. Yeah, they're, they're, they're closing on a decade at this point, right? But it's yeah. one of those things where like... um. I think that's more about commitment, about like, hey, we want to make a commitment to this game and, you know, we we have a realistic expectation of where we're going to be in X, Y, Z years, right? Oh, yeah. And so for me, it's one of those cases where like, if you're not comfortable, like, it's just the development. Game development takes years, right? It just so happens that we get to be along for the ride in early access. That's all. Oh, yeah. If you don't want that, just don't buy the game in early access and then wait for it to release, you know? Plenty of people, like, I didn't play Ready or Not until it was released. Yeah, I, uh, well, actually, that's, I, don't, I actually that's not true. I think I well, yeah, yeah, right. I did buy it for release. So yeah, I, I didn't even play the game in early access. I bought it for, bought it for release. People were like, oh my god, it's so much better than release. Well, good. I didn't play it then. Yeah, I, I probably would have uh, dropped it way sooner. Uh, even though I did still drop it. Eh, I didn't. I didn't care for it in the beginning stages. Right, but, and that's my point. Right, like how many people are going to play a game in early access, forget that it's early access. And then basically never play it again, even when it does release. Because like, well, I saw this game already. I don't need to play it again. What's changed? What's really been been different, right? And that's why you pay, that's why you pay, and that's why you give content creators access to like make huge videos for you. So that way, when it does release, people get exposure to it again, and they can see how much better it is since then, right? Yeah, that is definitely true. What um. What are you thinking about the factions? Do you think uh, they're going to end up balanced, or a ton of balanced issues, uh, balancing issues? Balancing meaning what? Uh, too many players on one side, basically, compared to others. 
I think you're going to run into issues. Um, I think you're going to run into issues for starters. There's not going to be any factions, you know, all for all intents and purposes for early access because for start for starting off because, you know, you have people who have all kinds of mixed factions able to work with each other. So it's not going to come down to are they in your squad or are they not? We, like we've talked about before in regards to um, PMCs and no consequences and all that kind of good jazz. So it's just going to be a matter of be a matter of like I'm going to sign up for XYZ faction, but if I have access to all the same missions, it basically means nothing. And if I can you know, squad up with people from different factions and it just matters which fob we come to. Again, it won't matter, right? If they make it, if they make it to the point where it's, um, you know, you have X, Y, Z fob, you have a, a fob for this faction, B fob for that faction, C fob for this faction. If they make it really strict in that regard, um, you run into a couple of problems. For starters, you run into problems with friends that maybe signed up for the wrong faction and they want to, they want to switch factions. And like, okay, cool. What's the benefit of signing from one faction over another where you can just flip and choose, right? In which case, again, very meaningless, except for the fact that like it kind of dictates who you can squad with that day or that run or whatever, right? Yeah. In which case, you know, it's it's fine. You're going to have people who are going to switch back and forth because they want to play with their, their buddies or this, that, and the other because unless there's some kind of in-game benefit to doing one or the other, there's gonna there's gonna faction up with what, what their buddies want to do. Now, there's gonna be a lot of ton, ton of players who don't necessarily have steady groups, who are gonna basically play whatever faction that you know suits them in terms of their lore. Now, I have a little bit of experience on this one playing Star Wars: The Old Republic. In that game, when it launched, like it was like a two to one ratio of Sith to Jedi. It wasn't even close, right? And that doesn't play out well when there's like an open world PvP endgame. Yeah. Right, it doesn't play out very well. Hell, even the instant stuff, it took them, I think, six months, maybe even longer, to finally patch in a a queue for where Sith can fight against Sith because the queue longs were just so queue times were just so atrociously long that no one would do them. Right, so consider this people rather just log off than play as a faction they don't want to play as. I don't think that's a big issue here because there isn't like classes and different kind of abilities or anything like that. I think this is going to come down to it doesn't mean a whole lot at the end of the day. And I don't think people should really put a lot of weight into it. Yeah, for sure. I don't think it's something to uh, worry about if that's going to be the case. But here's the thing, though, if it is like, you know, strict that way, like it's, it's strict, like, hey, if you have, you know, 48 players in the map and 12 of them absolutely have to be this faction, if it's the least popular faction, you're going to consistently see them underrepresented in the in the uh, in the servers, and that's going to be an issue, you know, that the devs have to deal with. So I don't really, I can see a scenario in which, um, you know, you have entire servers where there's not a single player of that faction because there's so many of the other ones. I think so I see real problems if they're going to be doing it that way. I think the best way would be like a. Say how the the map bases are set up right now, A, B, and C. So faction wise, you could join any other faction whenever you squad up with a team with your friends, whatnot, right? And whenever you hit join to join a server, because in the beginning it's gonna be just join PvP, join PvE, from what I still understand. So once you do that, it'll throw you in a server on A, B, or C FOB, you know? depending upon how many people there are. And then you'll have an... I don't, that's, that's like what we talked about earlier. You, you need like an insignia or something of some sorts that you know you're A, B, or C compared to any other operator. Or then, what do you do? You know? And how do you like fight that if you're doing a PvP scenario? You know? Because it, it should be like A versus B versus C, you know, vice versa. It's, I just, I see serious balancing issues around that. If it was a a two-faction thing, I don't think there'd be that many issues. But with three, I don't know, man, that's, that's pretty I, think, I don't think that's relevant. I don't think that's really relevant. I think even, even if there was two, you'd still run into the same issue because one faction is just going to be, you know primarily yeah. the issue i mean i want to understand in tarkov you guys have factions too and like 90 percent of them are the same faction yeah Mostly, so I, uh... I think that's going to be an issue regardless i I think the less meaning and less restrictions they put on the faction stuff will be better in, in the long run um 
and that's the case scenario for Tarkov right now. You have a uh, USEC, which you get the USEC guns, and then Bear, where you get the the uh, the Bear guns. But the issue lies with uh, one of the maps called Lighthouse. If you're USEC, you could get closer to the camps, and even in the camps, if you don't kill the the AI, which are rogues, they're called rogues. But if you're Bear, fuck. 200 meters out, they'll fucking one-tap your ass, you know? So it's, yeah, more people's USEC. Just because of that. I, I don't know why right. they did it that yeah. way. It's lore-wise, I understand, but uh, kind of fucked themselves on a, having a 50-50 split bear to USEC. But right. here, they're, it's, it's a little different. You know, there's all the same guns, you know? All the same starter areas from what we see so far at the moment, which sucks because it uh yeah, it takes away from that forty two to... kilometers, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think um, my issue again with the larger uh, map and the POI is like if unless there's something vital or consistently needed in between these POIs, the map's gonna come out that there's just POIs. Now. Could you have future content drops where you add new POIs? Sure, and you have the room for that. Um, but you have to do that carefully um, in terms of making it more, making it organic. And I can see that easily being a thing and just essentially it's adding a map. Like right now, the POIs are effectively not all, it's not all that different than having like seven or eight or 12 maps um, on Tarkov that you have to load into, right? The difference is that they're all in one map and you just have to unlock them. That's all. Yeah, and that's not that bad at the end of the day. Like it's really not right. Like I'm, I'm coming from a game that had like effectively two maps, maybe a third if you really wanted it to hurt yourself mentally. But it's uh, it's just basically two maps, and so that game it, it was enough. It was enough to 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 hold you over for quite some time. So having this many, you know, different areas, eh, it's not that end of the world, honestly. No, I I think we'll be pretty all right. I'm just curious about what the uh, little delay is and what's going on with that. And I would love to see some PvP action as well Are they as. Officially? Uh, I mean, we're 10 days out. You know, so? you would. I, I would really see them saying something. Right. So here's my thing very, I, very I, soon. I, following embark the way i do for for arc raiders these guys keep that shit under wraps like it was like the last alpha was in june we've heard mums the word that's all maybe you had one t one twitter thing saying yes we're still working on the game we play it every day don't worry about it that's basically it since then right these guys can keep things under wraps pretty hard and they're the guys with the finals they released that game with absolutely zero not notice whatsoever yeah so like by comparison gray zone warfare is giving out tons of information so honestly, sure. they could be dropping it out April first or whatever. They have a, they have zero delay. They just don't say it, whatever it is, right? You know. True. I guess we'll really just have to see and find out. What uh? What did you think about the PvP footage? I mean, not the PvP footage. The um, the alpha footage, the test. What do you mean? Um. Uh, just any issues with it that you've seen? Oh, stuff in like regards that. to the footage that came out on Friday, like all that stuff that got dropped? Yeah. Well, I, I think uh, them releasing the footage that they did to IGN didn't do them any, fa any favors because it actually objectively made the game look worse than it was. Um, having zero comms, having, you know, like it just, it didn't, it felt the game like it was, it made the game feel sterile by comparison. Yeah. Um, now, granted, you know, we have you have creators that can make a game look better than it actually is. And I understand that you want to have it just raw, just show rather than tell. But I like, I feel like they just take that to an extreme. And then when the other creators come, they get dropped with their own videos. It kind of shows the game in a much better light. And so the game so far looks exactly what I expected it to be. Yeah. Right. And so that's, you know, um, I think the AI is still very rudimentary. I was hoping for it to be a little more advanced by this point. Um, and some people say, well, that's the easiest, you know, AI level, yada, yada. But yeah, it still looks really, really dumb, though. Yeah, it's pretty janky. Right? 
right? It's 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 lethality is not in question. You can you want to have people randomly here and there, and it's, and you know, give you severe challenges, right? That's not the question. It's just that its movement is is in question. It's like for example, you never see a like the only time you ever see uh, AI in a building is on a balcony, and they're not moving. That's it. They never go in or out of a building. It just doesn't happen. Right. So that's a factor too. Um, I don't really see them take cover. So. Yeah. So it's one of those things where like, I, I understand that you're supposed to, this is supposed to be the, the easiest AI there is. It's like, oh, these are bandits, but like, like it, any person, even remotely not trained, as you put a gun in their hands and suddenly you start getting shot at, they're going to run for cover, man. Yeah, especially if you got military age guys in this kind of environment willing to do what they're doing. It's like, OK, you're going to be smart enough to just not be out in the open when you're getting shot at. I'm uh, I'm overall pretty impressed with it compared to um, how Tarkov was in the beginning, because that was factory. And uh, not long after it was customs, and that's just the A.I., bro, you could run around them in circles and hatchet them to death. And, and no, just steal their shit. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'll sit here and I can nitpick and do this, but I acknowledge yeah. it's me nitpicking. I'm still gonna. Play. This game looks still super fun. It's like it's super engaging. I'm gonna have a ton, of, ton of great times playing this with people. Like, I the game right now it just looks amazing in terms of like, you know, like something I'm definitely willing to pay money for. I'm definitely willing to sink a lot of time into it. So like me nitpicking, don't take that as a oh my god, I'm gonna be super negative and say this is thing, this that. No, thing. no, like, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I get that. I uh, I have some negative things to say about it though, real quick. They um, they had a video. I I don't remember who it was. I'm. It didn't look like he was missing his shots, and they had one AI, dude, like less than twenty meters out, take at least eight rounds from what it looked like in my eyes. Now maybe he missed. I don't know, but it it just seems like these AI are pretty tanky. No, Where? I think it's, it's it was a desync issue. I, I saw that it could too, be, too, could and be. They, and devs were talking about how that was a desync issue. I'm sure there was like at least two or three patches during the weekend. These these content creators had them, and so a great example was like Big Fry. He must have been playing super early on in the weekend and just caught f- footage of that, and that's only that. But like if you compare his footage to like somebody else's footage, they don't even look like they're even playing the same game. Yeah. So like you know, I, I think. Um, and then you have other AI who just drop at the drop of a hat, like you know, two three taps to the chest, and you're done. You're like, you're right away done. And yeah. So I think that was probably a desync issue. I don't think that was a AI being tanky issue. Uh, I think that they're doing a pretty decent job comparing to Redbeard Mortis's uh video. Have you seen that one or no? Uh, no, I haven't seen that one. He uh he has an AMD setup, and he had a ton of issues. And the dev said, nine out of ten, you're not gonna be able to play this test, and we're really sorry." But within, from what I recall, it was eight hours. They had a stable ish build out to the uh, out to him with uh, minor problems. Then he started cra- uh, crashing again. Then within, I I'll just say for simplicity's sake, another eight hours. And he had a completely stable build. So within 16 hours from, hey, look, I'm running AMD and it's ass. I, I can't play the game. To 16 hours later, he's, he's set up and ready to go. And um, Kushu had mentioned that he watched the same video. And I guess I missed this because I was in and out of it. Kind of like you, how you said about the video, whenever you listen to like a podcast thing, you're just listening to it. I was in and out of it, I guess. Because I, I missed a very vi- uh, vital portion that um, apparently the devs built out the specs of his exact setup and played it on that PC that they built to get it running very smooth. Which, dude, in, in 16 hours to do that and build out a PC and fucking fix all the issues, that's... Uh, I... I'm I'm new well, to I mean, this, but that's pretty that's pretty good in my opinion. Well, you know? building a PC should only take you about thirty minutes if you have the parts ready. Yeah, um, but like the I think Karma Cut he did point out that so far the devs have shown themselves to be very technically savvy. Like they're very yeah. good at like fixing the technical aspects of their game. So things like oh the sound is not the best. Like for example, I can say the the gun sounds were kind of like you know 
not great and like things of that nature or whatever right i can say things like that but like the technical aspects of the game they've shown themselves to be very adept at fixing this kind of stuff like quickly and you just demonstrated that so like technical aspects of the game to me you know i, I can point stuff out hey you can probably you should probably fix that i'll just submit a bug ticket and call it a day i'm not going to make that a huge judgment on the game based off that yeah what's um what's insane is yeah okay they have a little bit of gun issues with the sounds and whatnot i didn't I didn't notice anybody say anything besides the frogs and the brushes not making as much noise as they should or something like that from uh, what I recall. But this was before the alpha test stuff dropped. This was the, in quotations, the gameplay. Footage. Yeah. <laughs> but it, w which looked so staged still. But uh, pro that's probably because they did it like seven times or whatever, you know, repeat. Yeah, I'm willing to bet they did it seven times because, you know, uh, I think a bunch of us have stated we've seen footage of more or less that exact, you know, rundown. But it, all little details have changed here and there to show us that like, hey, they've been at this for quite a while trying to f figure out a way to present this to us in, in a good way. Um, oh, yeah. But, you know, the sounds of the guns to me, it's like I said, I'm being nitpicky because it's like basically you know the guns all sound the same indoor or outdoor it doesn't matter there's not any um it doesn't sound punchy it doesn't sound like a gun you know it, it's it, you can make these quips these, these these little nitpicky things right but again at the end of the day it's like it, it won't take them long to fix that shit no no no, no. but uh like back to the sounds like i was saying so comparing i mean everybody hates when we do this but uh comparing the tarkov dude Eight years, their guns sound pretty damn good, bro. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, but I'd rather have zero gun sounds, the crappiest stuff like a duck quacking, compared to in-game environment sounds. Especially when you're changing elevation. There's a um, uh, the bunker on uh, on reserves, the map reserves. When you're going down in certain locations and you go through a doorway, there's a sudden sound change where if you're on the opposite side of that and somebody's running towards you, it sounds like it's above you and not near you. So when they rush through that door, you're screwed. And this, this is the issues that I feel throws people into rat mode and camping because the sound in that game is ass. It is so bad, even in arena, where you have very minor differences in elevation and stuff. The sounds are just like, dude, where is this person? And then he's like right underneath you, but behind you. And it sounds like he's in front of you on the same level or some shit. It's, yeah, it's insane, be, bro. Yeah, these, kind, these kinds of games has to be, have to be, that sound has to be precise when it comes to that kind and, of stuff. And eight years, um, especially when sound whoring, like Tarkov, that's, that's strictly like I mean, PvP. That's, that's natural. I mean, that's just natural in, in these kind of games uh, when it comes to extract. When you're dealing with games that basically you lose things, uh, especially large time chunks of, of of worth of gear to to death, you have to like be you have to know how to manipulate sound all you want. That's just a natural occurrence that's going to happen. 